Welcome to the official, unofficial beginner's guide to entry point. If you're a new player or you're struggling with the game or even if you've never played entry point before, this video is the fastest way to learn the basics. It's one thing to watch a playthrough and copy what someone else is doing, but it's another to understand the mechanics yourself. Obviously this video isn't intended for everyone, but if you already know the basics, then try to find the hidden memes and references in this video. Anyway, let's get started. When you're creating your first character, you have to choose a class. Each class has its pros and cons, but overall, the Thief is the best class for starting out, so this guide will assume you're using a Thief-based character. After you create your first character, the game will send you the tutorial. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the tutorial, which is actually why I'm making this video. If you want to play it, then you can, but feel free to skip it and watch this video instead. Once you're done watching the cutscenes and creating your character, you're sent to the main lobby. Go to the missions tab and select a deposit. Create a lobby, set the lobby size to 1, and start the game. This is the first mission you should attempt. If you can beat it, then you're already better than most entry point players. But first, there are several concepts you should understand. First, there's two different game modes. In the stealth game mode, you have to infiltrate the map and complete objectives without being detected. While in the loud game mode, you will be detected and you'll have to fight enemies as you complete objectives. This guide will focus on stealth, which is plan A. You should always decide on the plan before starting the mission. If you decide on stealth, then you need a stealth character and a stealth loadout. Anyway, let's get started on loadouts. When you're choosing a primary gun, an example of what not to bring would be a 480 MCS. That's because this gun is visible and unsuppressed. Visible means that NPCs will detect your gun even while you're not using it, which is horrible in stealth, and unsuppressed means that firing the gun will alert the whole map. In stealth, all you need is a gun that's concealed, meaning it's not visible unless you're using it, and suppressed, which means that firing it won't alert the whole map. You don't need a powerful gun like a rifle or a sniper for stealth. I would suggest always bringing a stock UP9. It may not say it's suppressed, but it is. You don't need a secondary weapon, you don't need armor, and concealed items aren't unlocked yet. Anyway, let's get into a loadout. The items with the red X are never useful in stealth. The remaining items can be useful in stealth, but not every item is useful in every mission. Also, the items with the yellow X can't be used yet because they require certain perks to unlock. For this mission, select a lockpick and a silent drill. Anyway, let's start the game. In order to do anything, you need to know the controls. It might take some practice to memorize all of them, but you can always hold the tab key to see a list of controls. Press I to see your inventory. The two items you brought only occupy 6 inventory spaces, meaning they fit in your normal inventory. The equipment bag serves as extra storage, but in this case, you don't need it, so exit out of the inventory and press G to drop your bag. If you try to go too far into the bank, you'll notice a white text that says trespassing. This is called the player status and it controls how NPCs perceive you. If you're seen trespassing, then you have a short amount of time to get out before the NPCs get alarmed. If there is no text, then you're considered a normal civilian and you won't be detected at all. If the text is red, then you'll be detected very quickly. This is usually due to having a visible weapon or performing a suspicious interaction. If you have a disguise, then by default you get the disguise status. Some NPCs will detect you slowly, while others won't detect you at all. Having a disguise also allows you to enter most areas without being considered trespassing. Now it's time for the first step in most stealth missions, getting a disguise. Go to the back area, go down the stairs, and hold F to disable this camera. Disabling a camera means that they can't detect you anymore. However, the camera operator will notice that the camera stopped working and send a guard to investigate. This is known as the camera lure and it's a great way of isolating and taking out guards. Once the guard arrives, use your gun and immediately right click to aim down sights. This gives you the intimidating status, which intimidates NPCs you point your gun at in close range. Once an NPC is taken hostage, you can press F while looking at them and then move to make them follow you, 
or press F while standing still to make them get down. You can also interrogate some NPCs by holding G, but this isn't the case right now. Press V to knock out the guard and then hold G to take the disguise. Normally, leaving bodies on the floor is a bad idea, but no one naturally goes to this area, so hiding the body isn't necessary. Before we actually find an entry point, I need to explain one more thing. When an NPC is detecting you, you'll see this thing called the suspicion meter fill up. When it reaches one bar, the NPC will temporarily stop and look at you. If it reaches two bars, then the NPC will walk over to your location. And if it fills up completely, the NPC will be alerted and try to set off the alarms. You don't want this to happen, so whenever you're being detected, you should get out of the NPC's line of sight to make sure the suspicion meter disappears. Cameras also have a suspicion meter, which is very similar. If you're disguised, then you have to be facing forward to be detected. The main difference is that getting a camera suspicion meter to one bar will lure a guard to its location. However, it's not just a player that's detectable. NPCs and cameras will also detect things like bodies, hostages, broken doors, broken windows, broken cameras, and suspicious items. Anyway, it's time to go in. You can create an entry point by shooting this window. The broken window is suspicious and you don't want anyone to see it. Fortunately, there's only two guards in the basement and one of them is stuck in the camera operator's room. If you take both of them out, then the basement will be clear. Taking out the normal guard first is risky because the camera operator might see the body through the cameras, so you should take out the operator first. You don't have a keycard, so you have to drill this door. Once it's open, the lock will be broken, meaning you can't close the door. Broken doors are suspicious, but this won't matter once the basement is clear. Take out the camera operator and then find the other guard and take them out. Sometimes the other guard will notice you drilling, in which case, you should take them out and continue drilling. Also, guards have a small chance of dropping a keycard, which is a faster way to open this door. Go back to this room and drop your silent drill, since you won't be needing it for a while. Also, grab this keycard if you don't have one already. Now that this operator is down, the basement cameras are disabled, but you have to take out the top floor operator to disable the rest of the cameras. Go to the top floor and use your keycard to unlock the door. You're considered trespassing in this room, so close the door as soon as you enter. Then quickly hostage and take out the camera operator. Hold F to back your body and drop it in this corner so it's not visible when opening the door. Now that the cameras are down, it's time to complete the objectives. Intimidating the manager will make them drop the vault keycard while interrogating them will give you the vault code. However, you can't just do this out in the open or else other people will notice. Instead, you should lure them to a spot that can't be seen by other NPCs. There isn't just one safe spot, but this is a good example. Walk up to the manager and let their suspicion meter fill up two bars. Then, step back to the spot you want to lure them to and quickly hide behind cover before the suspicion meter fills up entirely. This spawn is out of view, so you can safely hostage the manager, interrogate them for the code, take the keycard, and knock them out. You can also bag the body and hide it in the camera operator's room. Next, you need the box ID and the blueprints. Use the lockpick to break into the archives. Every time you search a shelf, there's a random chance of getting the box ID, so keep searching until you find it. Then, search through the remaining shelves until you find the blueprints. Note that you are considered trespassing in this room, so if anyone notices you, you have to exit the room and wait for the person to leave before you keep going. Once you're done, go to the basement and open the vault. Opening the vault will sometimes lure guard to the basement, so wait outside the basement entrance for about 20 seconds. If a guard arrives, then knock them out. If not, then return to the basement. The vault has heat sensors, meaning that entering would instantly trigger the alarm. To disable the vault sensors, go to this room, grab the silent drill, and drill the sensors. Now, you can finally go inside and lockpick the box with the correct ID. Then, drop the silent drill and grab the phoenix box. If you want, you can also bag the cash for extra money. 
Note that certain actions, such as sprinting, proning, or carrying bags, give you the conspicuous status, which is the same as disguise, except you're detected a bit faster, so be careful. Exit the building, walk back to the parking garage, and that's it. Completing a mission will reward you with money and experience. Go back to the lobby and click on skills. This is the default perk for the thief, and every time you level up, you're able to take more perks. Since this is a stealth character, you want to avoid loud perks, which are generally toward the top left part of the skill tree. The first important perk you should get is Prodigy, which is the hacker class's default perk. This makes your character a hybrid class called the Infiltrator, which has a lot of benefits. In the deposit, you can use the keycard scrambler to gain a much cleaner entry point without having to break anything. Hacking this computer gives you the vault code, so you don't have to interrogate the manager, and hacking the computer in Maddox Gray's office gives you the box ID. The interference perk is also really good. It allows you to disable dome cameras and loop bullet cameras. A looped camera is similar to a disabled one, except no one is lured and the operator doesn't notice. This is useful because there's a limit to how many cameras you can disable before the camera operator gets alerted. The explosive entry perk is also useful for this mission. You can bring a breaching charge and place it on the transformer. Then, when it's time to enter the vault, you can activate the breaching charge to temporarily disable the vault sensors so you won't need to drill them. Doing this starts a timer and you have to exit the vault with the phoenix box before the timer runs out. I won't go over every single stealth perk, but on your screen are the most important ones. As you complete missions and level up, focus on getting the major perks first and then try to get the remaining minor perks. Anyway, if you're new to entry point, then I hope this video gave you a solid understanding of the basics. Obviously, there's a lot more to the game, so I put some useful wiki articles in the description. Also, if you want gameplay tips and help from professional players, or if you just want a place to hang out and discuss anything, then you should consider joining my Discord server. It's the overall best EP server, and I'm also really active on it. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.